This video will demonstrate how to use Excel's pivot table tool to create frequency, relative frequency, percent, and cumulative distributions for numerical data. Let's take a look at this spreadsheet for a moment. You can see there are a lot of variables here, some categorical and some numerical. We've collected data on 50 students. We have their major, their grade, their gender, and so on. Let's say we're interested in the first three variables, major, grade, and gender. Major and gender are, of course, categorical variables. Grade is quantitative, also known as numerical. So to start, let's select the three columns with variables we want to examine. That is columns B, C, and D. Now let's choose Insert, Pivot Table, and a dialog box pops up with the table range filled in as dollar sign $B to dollar sign $D. Let's give it the correct row numbers, that is rows 1 through 51, so I'll type in after the B the number 1, and after the D the number 51. This way I have rows 1 through 51 selected for columns B through D. We have a new worksheet selected, so that's good. Now press OK. If you want, you can select the entire worksheet. I chose to just select the columns with major, grade, and gender. Now we have a new worksheet, Sheet 2, and it has the pivot table fields on the right-hand side ready for us to fill in. Notice on the bottom right there are various fields. We have filters, columns, rows, and values. Let's start using the quantitative variable grade on exam for the rows. Click on the variable grade on exam and drag it down to the area where it says rows. Now we have a bunch of grades. We will need to group these into categories. Right click anywhere in column A and scroll to where it says group. By default, Excel groups the data from the lowest value to the highest value and then by 10. Let's leave the interval at 10, but let's change the lowest value to 50 and the highest value to 100. This way we can have the grades grouped from 50 to 59, 60 to 69, and so on. Good. Now let's click OK. And you can see the data is now grouped the way we want it. If you want to change the labels, Click in A3 where it says Row Labels, and let's type Grades instead. Alright, now we're ready to fill in the Values area, so let's go ahead and drag Grade on Exam to the Values area. And now we have a frequency count of the grades, which adds to 50. We can turn this into a percentage easily. Just right-click anywhere in column B, scroll down to where it says Show Values As, then choose the percent of column total, and now you have a percentage distribution. If you want to convert this to relative frequencies, select the entire column B. Then over here where it says General, in the middle of the ribbon, click on the drop-down arrow and select Number, and now you have a relative frequency distribution. Now let's say you want a cumulative relative frequency distribution. Well, let's make another column for that. So, drag down the variable grade on exam again to the values area. Now we have grade on exam dragged down twice to the values area, and that's why we have two columns, column B and column C. We can arrange the order of the columns by rearranging them down here. Just drag up or down and the columns will rearrange themselves. Okay, so now column B is relative frequencies. Let's turn it back to percentages. Select column B, then go back to where it says number in the middle of the ribbon. Scroll down and select percentage. And let me change the label here so I don't get confused. I will label column B percent. By the way, notice that when I click outside the active area of the pivot table, my pivot table panel on the right side of the screen disappears. To get it back, just click in any cell in the table to make it active again. 
You can also go up here in the ribbon where it says Analyze and then click on Field List and you can hide or show as you wish. Now let's turn to column C. I want this to be cumulative percentages. Right click anywhere in column C. Then scroll down to where it says show values as and choose percent running total in. Then a box pops up asking which variable. Confirm that we are using the grade variable by clicking OK. Now let's go into C3 and change the label to cumulative percent. And there you have it, a cumulative percent distribution. Now if we are interested, we can filter this data by another variable. Let's choose major. So go over on the right to the variable list and drag down major to the filter area. Now on the top row, you can see a drop down box for major. Right now the data shown is for all majors. Let's click on the drop down box and choose a major. Let's pick accounting. Now click OK. And you can see the values in the table changed. Now we're looking at data for only accounting majors. Interesting, the grades below 70 disappeared. That's because none of the accounting majors got below a 70. Let's change the major to management. And now we have the data filtered out so that only management majors show. One more thing I want to show you, and that is how to make a graph from this data. First, let me go back to the unfiltered data. I can either choose all from the filter box, or I can drag off major from the filter field area. Okay, now we are back to the way it was before. Click anywhere in the table, choose insert, and then click on recommended charts. You can see if we pick a column chart, you will get bars for both the percentages and the cumulative percentage, which looks pretty strange. A better way to show this data is by using what is called in Excel a combination chart. Scroll all the way down and you will see a combo chart. This allows you to chart both the percent column and the cumulative percent column at the same time. Click OK and you see the bars represent the percentages in each grade category and the line represents the cumulative distribution. This is called an ogive. One last thing, the bars should be connected to show a histogram, not separate since this is quantitative data. To get the bars to touch each other, right click into one of the bars, then choose Format Data Point, then over here where it says Gap Width, Change that to zero, press enter, and you have a histogram. And that's it. Everything you ever wanted to know about pivot tables for frequency distributions. Now it's your turn. Go practice. Bye.